Hey everyone, it's Saren. So, today I thought I would take a look at this article here before Odd Beginnings airs so that I don't rant about it forever and ever before I actually react to it. So, this act, I chose this article in particular because it has a lot of stuff that's revealed. It also has a video interview. I had to go through trials and tribulations just to get this stupid thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not expecting this to be super long, but <laughs> you know me. <laughs> so, um, I guess I'll go with the video one first, since... A new Odd Squad is coming to PBS Kids. I hope you like- Okay, so this is the trailer. It's probably gonna lag. ...challenges, <laughs> so we had... So, PBS. yeah, this features an interview with Tim McKeon, plus the Core 5 cast. So, I'm gonna like- I'm gonna play the video through, and then I'm probably gonna discuss it. Kids and the PBS Kids it. video app. How did you land on the season three concept, because it's very different from the first two seasons of the show. Yeah, well we, um, it's kind of the great combination of uh, creativity plus production challenges. <laughs> so we had a big gap after season two, um, and we'd done 80 episodes, so we were very grateful for the break. But as a result, we kind of tore down the set. And um, so we were sort of like, well, do we rebuild the set and do what we did in season one and two, where we have like a brand new odd squad, and we thought, uh, new agents, but we thought it was an opportunity to maybe reinvent the show again. And I think, you know, we always joke that we always make things harder for us ourselves instead of just rolling with the same characters, the same storylines. But we thought it was a new way to kind of put new um, breath into the show and have this mo uh, mobile unit. Hi, I'm Oswald. I am Orla. I'm the Big O. And I'm Opal. And I'm Omar. And we are Odd Squad! Changing up the, not even the format, but the setting of the show, I guess, it feels like maybe you've expanded the world more than you ever intended. Is that fair? I think we expanded it in ways we always hoped to. You know, I love, uh, even from season one, all the mentions of how Odd Squad's a global organization. Like, we have a Christmas episode, and you see them contact agents uh, from all over the world, and that was, like, in our first, like, ten episodes that we made. So it was d definitely baked in from the beginning. So, Miss O, now that you are the big O, do you still scream as much? I've never screamed in my life. I don't know what you're talking about. But yes, I do. What uh, What do you think of these new recruits that you have? My new recruits are very responsible and organized. I have a lot of trust in them. And recruits, what is it like working with the big O? Scary. Uh, very nerve-wracking at times. She but... forces me to be serious. Um, yeah. She's a bit scary. But she can have fun sometimes, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mizzo, what do you, or Bigo, sorry, what do you make of your new uniform? What do you think? I like it? my new uniform. It's definitely harder to keep clean, but I have a washing machine. Okay. So that lagged awfully. <laughs> I honestly was expecting it to lag for that long. But, um, yeah, so, that's basically the inner, the video interview, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that isn't in the video interview that's here. Yeah, so if you guys aren't aware, Rob Owen has written quite a few Odd Squad articles in the past. He's written Odd Squad articles since, I think, wow, how long has it been? I think since, like, Maybe it's premiere? I don't know. I only know that he popped up before season two. So, yeah, he's been writing about Odd Squad for a long while, and he's got a lot to say about it. Rob Owen is my man! <laughs> so, basically, it explains um, Odd Squad as a whole and season three and stuff like that. So,. Millie Davis is actually 13, which is actually kind of jarring because it's like she's she's a teenager at this point, but yet 
she still can act like a kid. And, I mean, if a teen can act like a kid in live action, then that's... Mm, I would like be up for respect at this point. <laughs> I have the utmost respect for them. Um, yeah. So, apparently, it's an unnamed city. Which is kind of true, but... Uh, I mean, it isn't really named that Toronto is the city, but it certainly is, it, it's certainly confirmed in the movie. So, yeah, that's basically the article with the sandwich project in it, which is also in Pennsylvania, I think. We thought it was an opportunity to maybe reinvent the show again. We thought it was a way to put new breath in the show to have this mobile unit. So basically, hmm, yeah, there actually is a teaser photo of the main four agents of season three in some sort of, uh, in some sort of, um, director's office that kind of looks like Ms. O's office that she's held for the past two seasons, but the thing is, we've basically been jostling around, like, what happened in the old set? It was auctioned off. Well, it wasn't really auctioned off. I guess it was torn down. It was demolished due to its instability or something. I don't know. It's not really confirmed, but... Either way, the new the set is old and gone and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> so basically, viewers meet four new agents who travel in the Odd Squad mobile unit. Agent Opal and Agent Omar depart their Arctic Odd Squad base for warmer climb. Warmer climbs? <laughs> is that supposed to say climates? I think it's supposed to say climates. I've never heard of the word climbs. Meeting up with Agent Oswald in New York. And Agent Orlin. Oh, I totally missed. <laughs> I totally missed that. And Agent Orlin, the Amazon. Okay, so we got a New York on. <laughs> oh, whew. okay. So, hmm. Wow. And I made like a whole. I made a whole document about predictions for odd beginnings too, and this just. Excuse it. <laughs> this just skews it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm from New Jersey, so <laughs> but I have family in New York, so we joke on New York all the time. <laughs> I guess this is where the Times Square will come in. Actually, I think that entire promo at the beginning was, uh, <laughs> it was basically all sorts of, well, it's mostly clips from Odd Beginnings. Mostly. Mostly. The other times, the other clips, uh, they aren't, they're from other episodes. <laughs> All the Odd Squad agents' names begin with the letter O. Mr. McKeon said producers keep a list of names beginning with O, and if they exhaust those as a contingency, they can always use Irish names like O'Connor or, or Sean, 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 I can't pronounce <laughs> Help me, I'm, <laughs> I'm a person with a high school diploma and I can't pronounce this stupid name. But technically these names are for tube operators, so... It's basically been a tradition of theirs, so... Heck, what, what do I know? <laughs> so basically, yeah, it talks about filming worldwide. Sure, so the agents travel to some locations via special effects green screen work. Japan, the Amazon, North Carolina. I mean, if you guys have seen the Odd Squad is Going Global trailer, the Amazon thing is pretty obvious. As I pointed out in my reaction video for that thing. It kind of looks like it was green screened. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of easy to tell when something's green screened in the show and when it isn't. 
<clears throat> so, <laughs> yeah. To Pittsburgh, New York, Australia, and Z Zambia. Zambia? Zambia? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm I poor at geography and history, okay? You cut me some slack. The setting thing is for kids to see their communities represented. The more we can physically be in kids' hometowns so they can actually feel like there's an odd squad presence locally is great. Okay, so that's kind of like what they were doing with the live show, too, and how it played pretty much everywhere. They were trying to convince kids that, yeah, you have an odd squad like right under the sewers, I guess. <laughs> like, look at a sewer drain, and you'll find odd squad just roaming about down there. I guess. Like, I, I can walk outside right now and I can look at a sewer drain and go like, wow, the Odd Squad's down there. That's pretty cool, I guess, and just go on my way. <laughs> I mean, I, I, us older folks know that's not true, but I mean, come on, these, these are kids, okay? Let the kids have their imagination. Let them be kids. <laughs> okay, I'm a Zoomer, but I'm not a ruined kids' lives Zoomer. Ooh, they even had a bodyguard shadowing them, although I think that was pretty obvious since they had, a. Uh, I think it was in the teaser photo on Instagram. Mr. McKeon declined to reveal the case that brings Odd Squad to Pittsburgh, which was chosen because it's the home of Fred Rogers Productions. Scenes for that episode were shown in August, and the episode is expected to air sometime this summer. Okay. So... This is kind of like a big thing. This is kind of like a stake to the heart and a slap to the face. Because if you guys have watched O Games before, there's a bit where Odd Todd whistles part of the theme to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And he admitted that there were other tunes that were jossed around as to what he could actually whistle. I kind of forget. I kind of forget what they are. For some reason, the Imperial March keeps popping up in my head, but I don't think that was one of them. But eventually, they settled on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood theme. So, what I'm expecting out of this episode is for them to make a lot of, not really jabs, but more like shout-outs. Because it's been long. It's basically established that this show carries on the legacy of Fred Rogers Productions, as all of the shows do. But... No show in Fred Rogers Productions' library carries as much wisdom and integrity and basically his overall values such as Odd Squad. There's really no other show I can actually, aside from Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, that's obvious. Aside from Don Quixote, that's also obvious. Yeah, there's really no other show that emulates his values and keeps them carrying on. Other than Odd Squad, and as I said, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, but we're not talking about that. Aside from this, though, basically the hiatus is supposed to start on, what is it, March 3rd? It's basically going from odd beginnings to slow your roll, and then we take a hi hi hiatus. I used to say hiatus all the time until I found out that's not how it was pronounced, but I digress. Basically, we're going to go on a hi hiatus. Okay, um, my brain's not working. <laughs> we're going to go on a hiatus in March, and then I guess we're supposed to get new episodes in the summertime. And I'm going to... I'm going to keep going here because there's something else related to this. But, yeah. I, I actually expected that it was going to go on for about two years. Kind of like what season one did. But it had 40 episodes and it had painstaking hiatuses. And that's what kind of broke apart the fandom was all those hiatuses. Hmm. It's, it's not the crew's fault, though. It's solely the fault of the network. I'm just going to say that now. I hold no fault to the crew for their hiatuses. It's solely the network's fault. <laughs> so, basically, it talks about the story next. 
This season, the big mystery is a villain in the shadows, and it's a new kind of kid villain. So, the shadow, as we've all known, who wants to start a villain network and gather up all the villains to take down the mobile unit. And the hint at the end of Odd Beginnings is that this villain has a very special relationship with one of our agents, but you don't know what the relationship is until the season continues. So, what we're getting is basically another rehash of Season one's story arc. And, yeah! Let's just, let's just give it, I'm, I'm trying not to break the mic without loud I'm applauding, but... Just pretend that there's stadium applause floating around here. But, yeah. In case you guys aren't aware, Season 1 had basically a long, winding story arc involving Odd Todd. So there were hints popping up throughout the season, random 43s, random mentions of Odd Todd, Olive's fear of pie introduced in the briefcase, etc. And then it culminated into Training Day. And then the second half of that season was basically them going about their odd cases, while um, Odd Todd basically tried every single... <laughs> tool in his arsenal to first it's, it's kind of like a villain arc for him. First he tries to get Olive to join him when that doesn't work he sets his sights on Torontonian citizens then he tries to take over Odd Squad, then he tries to get Olive kicked off of Odd Squad and then eventually he gets beaten in the end and reformed. So it's kind of like a whole new villain arc and that's what I'm hoping for Season 3, is that we get a whole new villain arc. That's what makes the show good, is that Cyber Chase had a story arc too, and that's why people love it. And people like this show because it has a story arc too, which is kind of rare for PBS Kids shows. It's very rare, actually. I really can't name any other show post-revamp on the air right now that has a story arc like this, Cyber Chase aside, because I think it does have a Valentine's Day special, but I don't know if it's still airing new episodes aside from that or what. But yeah, basically this plays out like Season 1's Zero Effect, where there's a hint at the end about Odd Todd having a special relationship with one of our agents, Agent Olive, but you don't know what the relationship is until the season continues. So it's basically left ambiguous. Season 2. Uh, season 2. Oh boy. <laughs> that season didn't have an overarching story arc. It was very, very weak story-wise. It did have the overarching story of Otis being Otis having a serious past and they did have Easter eggs much like season one but the payoff at the end was really weak because they basically shoved Olm into being a villain and just like yeah okay you're a villain now I guess your stupidity is an act and you're really smart instead you're actually really smart and intelligent and basically, his motive was, like, anything you find in a warrior cat's book. Like, he was trying to be the Big O, or a director... What is it? A director of the Big O. Oh, I think... I think it was a director. Yeah. I think he was trying to be a director upon immediately graduating from the Academy... But obviously you can't do that because you have to climb the ranks and the hierarchy and all that. But. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm sorry I lost my train of thought for a second. But he basically. Once he was denied the position of director. And they are like no you can't be a director. You have to climb up the rank. Like any old normal job where you go in as an employee. And you have to work your way up to manager. He basically went on a tirade and basically tried to destroy Odd Squad. And he actually almost succeeded. He created a... Well... 
Well, I just <laughs> I just realized my own irony in trying not to reveal the season one's finale, and yet here I am spitting facts about odds and ends like nobody's business. But yeah, basically the point is that he's basically a villain, and he was thrust into the position without any prior warning. Although there was the reveal built up, and Otis's mystery past is resolved, and his relationship with Olympia is repaired and stuff like that. But overall, it was just very weak story-wise. And it seems like they're coming back into some sort of renaissance with this, um, with Odd Beginnings. I mean, not only is it a two-parter, unlike Zero Effect, well, yeah, <laughs> unlike Zero Effect, First Day was a two-parter, but... They're basically trying to set up an overarching storyline with the villain, which is actually a good thing. So I'm really excited to see where the shadow is going to go and how she's going to be written. And I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray right now that it's good <laughs> and that, yeah, that it's good. I mean, that she's written well, that the story arc pays off, because that's what got me into the show to begin with. And, I mean, aside from the whole live-action show on PBS Kids, that's a rarity thing. Yeah, the story arc is what gripped me. Joshua Kill... I can't pronounce anything today. Joshua Killamnick. Yes, that's his name. <laughs> who played Odd Time. Did a spectacular job. And I don't know who plays the Shadow. I don't know her name. But I can only hope that she delivers a good, um performance as the shadow. So, yeah. You guys have my opinion on that. I didn't want to rant about this forever, but <laughs> here I am, I guess. So, we have Tony Collette, who, if you guys saw my last video, she was basically the Sand Queen. Expected to air in winter 2021. Oh! Okay. So, basically, this is going the same exact route as, uh, um, well, not season two. Season two started in 2016, and it concluded in 2019. So, it took about three years to air 35 episodes. Okay. So, yeah, Tony Collette I already knew about, and from what I see... Her being the Sand Queen, she actually looks really menacing. I mean, <laughs> she actually does. I mean, we don't really know much about her. It's like everything's on the actress. I, I, I didn't even know who Toni Collette was. I had to look her up because I've never seen either of these movies. <laughs> but I guess this joins the ranks of like Jack McBrayer and Hannah Simone, her award-winning actresses and actors. <laughs> yeah, so basically, this is going the same exact route as, uh, well, no, actually. For this season to air in a year, I mean, I, I do, uh, my opinion's kind of just on this, because while I do like a consistent season, and my god, PBS Kids, what the hell are you on that you're making this a consistent season? But at the same time, it just seems like, compared to the last two seasons, it's like a burner season. Because as I stated before, and this holds true, we have to treat every single finale, every single finale as the series finale because you never know if it's going to get a season 4 or season 5. I mean for huh, for all we know season 3 could be the final season of the show and while I certainly don't want that to happen sometimes the truth just has to be faced and it's up in the air but the catch is that after odds and ends aired Two months later, we got an announcement saying that it was renewed for season three. 
<laughs> maybe even, well, maybe even before that, if Sinking Ship had their, uh, had their placeholder image up and Odd Squad mobile unit page up, if they had that up, but, yeah. <laughs> So uh, while I want to remain hopeful, at the same time, I'm a little nervous. Because I do want the show to succeed. I want the show to make an impact in society. And I want people to see it as a really great show. And one of the most impactful shows of both the 2010s and possibly the 2020s, too. But... If they're going through a burner season just like that, it's kind of concerning. I don't really know where the show's future is going to head, and that's kind of concerning to me. I mean, I do like other content. I do have other content that I can take my time with. Like, I've been binging the original Powerpuff Girls. Mmm. Definitely go watch it on Hulu. It's, wor it's worth the six bucks to go binge that. But, yeah. But I digress. Let's move on to happier things. Another batch of 20 episodes has been ordered beyond the 20 episodes that begin rolling out this week. Okay, so that's basically what the Odd Squad Mobile Unit Season 2 thing is on on uh, Sinking Ship's page. That's what's up with that. <laughs> and actually, this actually is really good news because 20 episodes is definitely not enough to have five characters, a whole load of villains, and an overarching villain. It's definitely not enough. So for them to have 20 more episodes... Oh. It's beautiful. But... See, but the thing is... You can't really, like... Huh. If we were to get 40 episodes... In the span of a year... Basically, PBS Kids is going to have to keep on churning out, like, huh. oh, I forget the name. Someone else called it a tentpole event, I think. Is it called a tentpole? I think it's called a tentpole. Basically, Odd Squad is going to be a tentpole show for PBS Kids for, like, every other month. Yeah, that, that's basically it. Every other month. Just... <laughs> Every other month, you get an Odd Squad special of five episodes. <laughs> I mean... It might be possible that this could be a season four. It could be. But... At the same time... I was, I was hyped initially because I'm like, Ooh, season three has 40 episodes. And now that I'm looking at it and talking about it, I feel kind of hesitant. I really do feel kind of hesitant. So, if the show's new direction has any downside for the young cats, it's the removal of the original multi-story Odd Squad office set, which was filled with slides. We had a huge bulk of who we weren't allowed in it most of the time. <laughs> I mean, season two, they let up their leniency on the on the pit, but, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for that, I guess. Yeah, so basically, this is just, like, a little short review slash reaction video talking about the various, uh, this, this article, basically, because it has a lot of stuff in it. So, yeah. Um, I guess I see, I'll see you all guys, you, I guess I'll see all you guys for odd beginnings, and hopefully I'll get a new brain by then, so I don't go just spew out word vomit. <laughs> uh, why am I like this? Anyway, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys for odd beginnings probably on Friday, because PBS Kids won't have it up until that Friday. <laughs> so, yeah, um, see, so if you guys want dumb animation opinions and Odd Squad shit posting, 
I generally dumb tweets. I make a lot of dumb tweets, folks. I'm the queen of dumb tweets. You can follow me on Twitter. My link is in the description. Um, I also have a SoundCloud. I don't think I've ever put that out before, but I don't really post on SoundCloud because I don't make music. I basically just have, like, a little list. <laughs> and that's it. But, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so I guess that's it. I'll see you guys, um, I'll see you guys Monday, I guess, or Friday, or whenever. <laughs>